I've been putting off telling you this for a lot of reasons because YouTube's going to demonetize this video because I'm scared of the reaction and honestly because I've tried to film it multiple times and I've started crying every time. But I have to talk about this and I have to tell you this story because when I was in college my older half sister took her own life because of depression and honestly because of debt. Even 12 years later I feel my body flood with heat and I feel the desire to cry, not just because she's gone, but because of the despair <laughs> that she felt and because of how hard it was for her to convince herself that she could get out of the situation she was in. <sighs> if you're new here, my name is Mary. This is Pennies Not Perfection, where we talk about budgeting, paying off debt, and all things personal finance without being a money nerd. And I do this, I talk about money on YouTube because I've seen what debt can do to people. I've seen the despair and the destruction that debt can cause, and I felt the stress and fear myself. I know the toll it can take and it can't be ignored. We have to talk about this stuff and that's why I make these videos. I've never shared this story before. I've chickened out of mentioning it multiple times in videos and comments. There's never felt like a good time to share this story. There's never felt like a time where it didn't hurt <laughs> or make me wanna cry. <laughs> and crying on YouTube, you don't wanna be a meme. So I've never wanted to share um, that story. The last few days, I've heard a lot of really vulnerable stories about money and the toll that money has taken on people's lives, both good and bad. I finally feel strong enough to tell this story and to share why it's so important to me, why I talk about money both in person and on YouTube. My sister was in debt and she had very expensive medication she had to take, so she felt like a burden. Her husband never would have thought that and he didn't, but she felt like he worked too hard to take care of her and she was just an anchor on her family. Unfortunately, if you have dealt with depression, if you are depressed, debt can be that extra anchor that pulls you down. And for some people, debt can be the source of depression to begin with. They're so intertwined and they feed off of each other. Problems with money and debt come with this massive amount of shame and fear for a lot of us. As a society, we don't really talk about money mistakes. We don't want to admit that we've gone so far in debt for something that sounds like a bad decision. We don't want to admit that our careers can't pay for our lifestyles or even for things like our medicine. We don't want all of the judgment that we know will flood in by sharing our expenses. We don't want to end up the joke of someone's video. We don't want to be judged and feel even worse when we know we've already made bad decisions. So we exalt experts and millionaires and act like they have it all figured out. And then we try to hide our own fear and shame when we're not doing the same things right. But for some people like my sister, it doesn't work. It just builds and builds and builds until that final decision comes and you take the route that seems easy at the time, but hurts everyone for decades later. <laughs> Debt feels so scary sometimes, and as the hole gets deeper, it feels even worse. At FinCon, I met a lot of different people, and a lot of people shared stories about why they could never ever do a YouTube channel about money, and I get it. <laughs> I'm scared of the reactions I get on all my videos. I'm scared people are gonna judge me, and think I'm stupid and judge my choices. But at the same time, I know that there's a greater purpose to what I'm doing here. FinCon made me realize why I care so deeply about talking about money. And it's not because I'm earning a side hustle income here. It's because I feel like I can make a difference in at least one person's life. I met Tim Schmoyer at FinCon and I've listened to his podcast in the past. And his story involves how his channel helped reach people and change lives. And he even has had people write to his family and tell them that they didn't make the choice my sister made because of his channel. Tim's story hit me right here. <laughs> Y'all, if I could stop that happening from one person, if I could give one person hope that they can get out of debt, that they can figure out how to manage their money, that they're not a burden just because of some balance sheet. 
<laughs> this channel's worth it. It's worth every hour I've worked on it. It's worth every frustration, every mean comment. <laughs> if my channel shows even one person that they can get out of debt, that they can find a way to get from that dark, scary place to a place of hope and a place of debt freedom, to a place where they don't feel like a burden on their family or themselves, that is worth it to me. If I could show just one person that there's light at the end of the tunnel, that's worthwhile. When I graduated, I had $20,000 in debt in my own name and student loans. I had $5,000 in credit cards and I couldn't get a job. I ended up working for my local YMCA for $9 an hour and I was terrified. That was only two years removed from when my, I watched my sister get taken off life support and I was scared to death. <laughs> I got depressed, but then I took control, figured out how to pay off those loans, I paid off my credit cards, and I figured out how to use money responsibly. It's been a long time and I'm still learning things. I only learned how to do sinking funds this year. So like it's been a journey of mistakes and dumb choices. I've gotten to a place where I manage money a lot better. I'm still not great. I'm still learning stuff. I only just learned how to do sinking funds this year. But managing money now feels powerful. It's not stressful. And I know that I can pay off debt. And I know that even when I make mistakes, they aren't the end of my world. I know that even when I make money mistakes, I can fix them. I can learn what to do and correct them and learn from it and grow from it. I make mistakes all the time still, but that's the beauty of this. You don't have to be perfect for this to work. You don't have to do a plan perfectly to get out of debt, but you can get out of debt. It is not the end. So I felt that despair that debt can bring when I graduated with almost $30,000 in debt. I still feel scared every time our budget gets out of control or be very too far off of it, or my husband and I aren't on the same page for a month. I get it, I know it, I feel it. I lost my sister to the most extreme version of it. So showing my budget and my mistakes and still being able to improve and grow and do better helps you or it helps someone, just one person, it's worth it. If I can share something that changes your life or changes someone's life for the better, then I feel like I'm honoring that promise I made to her. I just wanted to share all this because no matter how deep of a hole you're in or how big of a burden you feel like you are, it's not true. You can do this. You can figure out a way to get out of whatever hole you're in. There are solutions even if you don't have them right now. You can find ways. You can find a way out. Don't let experts talk down to you. Don't let them scare you. Don't talk yourself out of trying because you don't know the best plan or because you hate math or because of any reason that's running through your head. You are fully capable of figuring your money out. You're fully capable of getting out of debt. You might not get it right every time. You might feel like you're in a pretty deep hole, but none of us get it right every time. Not even the experts, and I learned a lot about that this past weekend. So this is why I talk about money on YouTube. It's why I share our financial situation. It's why I am so passionate about doing this. It started as a hobby and a side hustle for me, but there's a deeper reason behind why I share my money situation, behind why I share paying off debt, and it's because of my sister. So yes, I want to get my own financial life in a better situation, and I want to improve our own lives, but I also want to put it out there in case it does ever save anyone from that despair and depression that debt can bring. If you think you can't get out, or if you think you're a burden, or if you think you're in too deep, don't listen to those thoughts. That is a lie. Depression lies to you. Debt can make it feel so much worse. So much worse. You're more than a debt. You are more than a negative balance sheet. People love you. They care about you. And I love and cared about my sister. And 12 years later, I wish she hadn't felt like she was a burden. I wish I could talk to her. I wish she had not thought that debt made her worthless because it wasn't true. At all. We'll cry break. I'm okay. I've never shared this before and I'm super nervous about publishing it, but I think it's necessary. I think you need to know why I talk about money. I wanted to share my story. I wanted to share her story. There is still so much stigma about not only therapy and taking care of your mental health, 
but being in debt. People don't talk about it. They don't want to say that they've done these things that have landed them in a hole. You feel stupid sometimes. And there is definitely a stigma about not managing money well. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about getting help. Let's talk about therapy. Let's talk about debt. Let's talk about all the things that we're not normally talking about. It's okay to need help. It's okay to reach out. So this is the story I had to tell and it's why I'll never encourage anyone to take out debt. It's why I want to be debt free. It's why I'm paying off debt for my whole family. It's why I'll never encourage anyone to take out debt without thinking through the emotional aspect of it. It's why I personally want to be 100% debt free. And it's also why I'm so cautious of my own mental health. It's why therapy is in our budget every month. And honestly, it's why therapy will be in our budget probably for the rest of my life. So that's why talking about money is important to me. It's why talking about therapy is important to me. It's all rolled up in the same idea that money is more than just a spreadsheet. There are emotions attached to it, there's value attached to it, and there is negative value attached to it when we feel like we're doing something wrong. It's about more than just pennies and how we balance our budget each month. So that's the one thing I haven't told you guys. And it's the one thing I've been scared to talk about. I hope my mom thinks I did this justice and she may never watch this video and I may enlist it and it, I may delete it, and maybe this was just cathartic for me, but I had to say this, and I had to tell you why talking about money is so much more important to me than just making videos and making money on YouTube. Thank you guys for listening and for being here and being one of the most supportive communities on YouTube. I love you.